hello guys welcome to my channel my name is miracle mimi for short if this is the first time seeing my beautiful face you're welcome so our next video is from thomas sowell tv and it says joe rogan is shocked to learn about thomas sowell's wisdom like seriously so joe rogan doesn't really 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 know about thomas sowell ah he's learning work he's learning hmm. let's check it out so, uh, do you know Thomas Sowell? I know that name. Why do I okay. know that name? Thomas Sowell is a big, uh, famous conservative. He's at uh, Stanford. Um, he's at the Hoover Institute, I think. Anyway, so, you know, within this, I mean, first, just to set all this up, we should set up briefly how does culture work, right? And the way culture works is, is that, it, like genetic evolution, it works based on blind copying. So what ends up happening is, is that you are in awe of people, right? You look up to people, and so you blindly copy the things they do. And specifically, you start by blindly copying from the outside, and then you work in. Thomas Sowell is a black guy, right? Okay. And Thomas Sowell has, for years and years and years, been trying to fight racism. But he's been trying to fight racism by having a conversation about culture. Right. And the fact that there are essentially two different sort of, you know, to, we're speaking broadly here. Right. But this is for the purposes of communication. Um, we're going to tell a simple story to start off with. Right. So broadly speaking, he puts two different cultures of people with dark skin next to each other. And one culture is these people from the West Indies. And one culture is this group of people who grew up in the South with slavery and all that sort of stuff. Now. What one group, the West Indies group, does really well. So a, a lot of the successful black people, people like Colin Powell, are originally from that cultural heritage. The other group is the group that you find in ghettos and African-American communities and all that sort of stuff. They don't do well, right? They don't get good education. They, you know, shoot each other. There are all these sorts of things. And the reason why Sol has been telling this story is because he's been trying to say, you know, when liberals look at the people in ghettos, they say, ah, racism. That's why they're not succeeding. And Sowell is saying, no, it's not. Because if you look at this group from the West Indies, they also came from the experience of slavery. There was slavery in the West Indies. They are also black, so they also face racism. And yet they do well. So it has to be something else. And that other thing is the fact that these black people who are in the South, there's always been a big question, were black people robbed of their culture? Or did they preserve their authentic African culture? And what Sowell is saying is that they were robbed of their culture, and so they picked up the culture of the people around them, and the people around them were rednecks. And if you look at the white redneck culture and the black redneck culture, they have a lot of the same values. They don't particularly respect education. They love Jesus. They use violence in their conflicts, and um, they, you know, uh, there's there's just you know a lot of the same values and a lot of the same outcomes and even ebonics which is you know black english is actually all from the west of england so it's actually this what it's from the west of england so for example if you go to places like cornwall um there used to be these amazing um uh these amazing ads on british tv right for this uh this devon custard or whatever and they would always say devon knows how they make it so creamy and they all talk like this right and so it doesn't sound like black english but they do say things like oi be doing that and we be doing this and you be doing that and they be doing that and so there's that use of that copula b right where instead of saying i am you are he is she is they are they just say i be you be we be they be which is the classic feature of black english african-american Vernacular English. Yeah, right. Tomosowa is one of the great intellectuals of America. America. People of America value what you have now that he's still alive. Like, this man only talks from facts and research rather than emotions. Ah, what an amazing person he is. Tomosowa, bravo to you. Me, I'm wishing him long life for him to live long and long for, to be able to keep on saying the truth, keep on saying the facts. So it doesn't sound like black English, but they do say things like, oi be doing that, and we be doing this, and you be doing that, and they be doing that. And so there's that use of that copula be, right, where instead of saying I am, you are, he is, she is, they are, they just say I be, you be, we be, they be, which is the classic feature of black English, African-American vernacular English. Right. Now, 
The point is, is that how, mind blower. Mind blower. Now, let's imagine that. How do you think that Thomas Sowell has been received by liberal America? <laughs> Not well. Not right. well. Not well. And so, for example, Sowell has a book called Black Rednecks, White Liberals. Okay, and his whole point is that. You know, if you actually, and you know, again, like Sowell is, you know, he researches the shit out of this stuff. He really does his work. Now, if you if you look at the experience of African Americans after slavery, after slavery, they do really, they, they start to make real progress, right? And a large part of the reason why they make progress is because you start to get a lot of people from New England, either, you know, black people from New England or white people from New England, who come down and sort of reshape the culture. They create these schools, and they're teaching those New England values, right? It's those Puritan values of hard work, tenacity, all of that sort of stuff. And so there's all this progress. And you have people like Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington was an actual slave. And then after he got his freedom, he got to go work in a salt mine, which is literally the worst job ever. And in Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, he tells this great story about seeing a schoolhouse, right? And that, you know, he thought that going into a schoolhouse was about as close to heaven on earth as you could get. Whoa. Like, this is a dude who wanted an education really, really badly. And that's a lot of what you find in the, you know, early black experience in, you know, the post-slavery period. And in fact, you know, blacks, you know, before sort of World War II actually had higher rates of marriage than whites, all of these sorts of things that, you know, are now supposedly a problem. And then there's this turnaround, right? The black experience starts to go south, right? It starts to get worse. And what year is this around? This is post-World War II, right? So, um, so post-slavery... Black people experience uh, a rebounding. There's They're starting to make ambition, some progress. There's ambition. Progress. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if in terms of books to read, like, you know, just of because a large, you know, a large part of what I'm trying to do in general is really let's move to the place of all people are created equal. Like, let's remove all these stupid distinctions. Right. And really live that principle. And the problem is, is that in order to really live that principle, you need a new narrative that beats slavery. So, you know, it's not if you go and talk to racists, you can't just say uh, racism is bad. Like that doesn't destroy racism. Right. Right. What destroys racism is when you make sense of the things that they know. Right. They see, you know, people who are violent in the ghettos or they see crime or they see a lack of education or they see that Africa is poor. And you're able to tell a better story that makes sense of the things that they know, but also comes out with the conclusion, oh, we actually all have the same potential. I see. Tomosowa is the smartest living human being on earth. Yes. Apart from Gerald Peterson and some others, but Tomosowa, I just really recently came to know about this man's business last year. This man talks, he talks, hi. Like, he's so intelligent. His ability to speak clearly, even on this old age, he is. That's, that's the most shocking one. For him to speak, even on, even in his old age, is 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 a is a is a mind blow. Like the way he describes complex ideas in simple language, the way he breaks his sentences, his talks, his his words, like he breaks. Breaks it so that everyone can understand what he's saying, so that everybody can understand the meaning of this, that, and the rest. Ah, and to reason carefully is much. The way this man reason, the way he reason is just so, so, so much. Nobody can compare to him, even in his old age. That's that's the most shocking one. I think he's 95 years of age. I think so. Like, I don't know, but he's 90 something years, guys. Please do it to let me know his present age in the comment section. Like, do, do you know one of the quotes I love from Tomosue, like, 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 really touched me that it makes me always think and I will never forget about it. Do you want to know? What you want to help people, you tell them the truth. But when you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. That is Thomas Sewell's quote. Ciao. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Like, watch, and subscribe to my channel. And I'm just so, so, so happy for Jordan Re uh, 
Joe Rogan for coming to know about Tobu Sewell existence. Like, I think these two people should sit down and collab together and talk together. It would be, be a very good measure. Seriously, it would be very, very good. Have a wonderful day, guys. Like, watch, and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.